Perry Duran, how are you? How tell us how are you rocking the podcast? I'm rocking the podcast because I'm continuing to have amazing conversations with fantastic podcasters. And it, it's great because it just runs the gamut. Like it could be any topic that they podcast about, as long as they're an amazing podcaster, then I'm really excited to talk to them because they each have their own personality and they each bring something special to the show week over week. Yeah. And so your show is called Podcast Junkies, which is just a great brand. I have the t-shirt Podcast Junkies, everyone who loves podcasts and kind of relate. And you do these really long and in-depth interviews with podcasters. Why did you decide to rock the podcast with really long interviews, which kind of go off in like a lot of different directions with everyone you talk to? Yeah, it's a good question because a lot of times people think that there's a certain strategy for how long a podcast episode should be. But in reality, it's as long as your listeners will tolerate and continue to listen to week over week. And I found that by digging deeper on these conversations, I was getting to have more meaningful talks with people. And I think you, you may have realized it yourself when you have conversations with people or, or just in real life about it takes about 15 to 20 minutes yes. to sort of break the ice mm -hmm. and then and then that's the that's the point where you start to dig deeper yeah. and really find out something that they have they might have mentioned and, the, and then you can tease apart and just gets to allows the listener to get to know the host a bit more than just as a host of a podcast that they listen to regularly yeah that's awesome and you've also been a guest on podcasts what are you an expert in like what kinds of shows do you go on what do you talk what do people interview you about in the beginning, when I just started podcasting, it, you know, it, it's hard to say that I'm, I was, you know, an, a, any sort of expert on podcasting. But I, what, what I was really was a, a, a fan uh, and a student of productivity. So I would go on earlier shows and talk about how I, uh, I like putting together procedures and documenting and, and geeking out on productivity. So in the beginning, I was on shows for that. But obviously, after two and a half years of doing podcast junkies, I've learned a lot of what works from a marketing perspective and from a content. Uh, perspective. And I've been able to talk about that. And as a result, I've actually started my own business, mm -hmm. my podcast consultancy, Fullcast, based on everything I've learned through trial and error with Podcast Junkies. Yeah. And every time I talk to you, you have a different app or software or tool that you use to be more productive or more effective. Like you were just telling me about Fancy Hands, which is an assistant like app. And you've also told me about lots of little tools you use uh, for social media marketing because you have, you know, a full uh, service product podcast production company where you work with really high end clients on their podcasting. Can you think of a story of how podcasting has helped grow your business? I mean, I guess it actually started your business, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah, pretty big. Yeah, it, it's really fun. You know, it's, it's fun to talk about because a lot of times, you know, when, when we talk to fellow podcasters, they're so eager about figuring out a way to monetize. And I think they have to uh, stay the course for a long period of time to see where their expertise comes out of. Like, uh, like let it bloom naturally and don't try to force a bunch of PDFs and books to people that are just going to crowd the market with a bunch of stuff that we don't need. So right. what I did was just learn over time what's working from a marketing perspective back and forth with my show. And then I invested in myself and joined high, high level coaching programs because I wanted to be around people who were doing really, really good things. Six yeah. figure, seven figure earners. You know, the Jim Rome quote, you, you are the average of the five people you right. associate yourself with. So I said, where do these people hang out? What do they do? And then I realized I could create an offering that was for them. It's a premium priced offering, completely done for you. Mm -hmm. uh, not only do we cover the, the basics, the editing, the production, but we handle all the, the marketing for them as well. We actually take over their logins for their website yeah. and for all the social media, and we do full posting for them. So the Podcast Junkies is still a, a, a proving ground. Mm -hmm. And as I find things that work, like repurposing transcriptions onto medium.com, you know, we, we bake that into the offering for our clients. And I'm just always interested in ways to get them more visibility. And I've had a couple of uh, earlier clients now who've had some uh, recent success stories as well. I like that you have a podcast production company and you have a really great podcast. So it's it's almost like that's your guinea pig. Like you actually see what yeah. works. So when you do something with a client, you're like, I'm doing this because I know it works because I've done it with my own show. And I think that's really important to actually practice what you're preaching and practice, you know, the service that you're actually offering. Yeah, exactly. Well done, and I Harry. And, I, and I think what happened in the beginning is as I started to get, this is a really important tip for, for people who are starting a business. When you get that first or second client, and I'm sure you can relate to this, you have to treat them like gold. You have yes. to go out of your way 200% value because, you know, if, there, if you just have that one client, you don't want to lose that one client. And you're right. just like, what else can I do? What else can I do? Yeah. Where else can I? And for me, it was like, where else can I promote the show? Mm -hmm. How else can I add value? 
what else can I do to help them, you know, shorten that learning curve? And, and for the new people that came on early, they really didn't know anything about podcasting, but they were really smart in their subject area. So mm -hmm. anything I could do to take stuff off their plate that was related to podcasting or marketing or graphic design or, or editing, I said, look, that's not your genius. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't get concerned about that. Yeah. Let, me, let me take that off your plate. That's awesome. So how can, like, if people need a podcast producer, they need help with their podcast marketing. I always think of you, I mean, you're the first person I think of when I think of somebody that like helps podcasters with their marketing, because there's yeah. a ton of podcast producers and editors and there's assistants, like people that can do your social media marketing, but that's more broad. But I always think Fullcast and Harry know a ton about actually podcast marketing. So how can people engage with Fullcast if they really want to ramp up their podcast marketing? So they can reach out to me uh, at the website. It, it's just, or you can just email me directly, Harry at fullcast.co. I'll make my email <laughs> directly available. I'm, I'm really, really open and I love talking to people. I, you know, I'm willing to get on a phone for a quick 10, 15 minute chat to see where they are in their business. And a lot of times, sometimes that people just need like a little adjustment mm -hmm. or something small that they can try. As you know, with marketing, yeah. there's so many different tactics to try. If you try yeah. to do them all at once, you'll get overwhelmed. Yeah. I, I really I really suggest trying one, letting it run for a couple of weeks and seeing if it's getting you traction. Right. But the, at the end of the day, as you've seen at, with me at Podcast Moving and Podcast Junkies, I'm, I'm all about adding listeners one at a time. Yeah. And a lot of time people are so concerned about, get, about getting their podcast into the thousands. Right. But who are those thousand people? Like, yeah. do you know them? Do you know their names? Yeah. As opposed to like if you had a couple of hundred and you can name, you know, 30 or 40 of your yeah. active listeners, I think that's more valuable. It is. It is. I've met... I met one person at a conference just a couple weeks ago and he's like, I listened to your podcast and he's been listening for a while. And it's just so great to know like the face and name and a little bit about somebody that actually has been listening. So I think that's, that's really true. Even if you don't have, if you have a couple hundred downloads an episode or even 50, like if you don't have a lot of listeners, but you know who several of those people are, that's more powerful and impactful in your business. The best one is the listener you brought over to me at Podcast Junkies. Yes. I <laughs> saw her. She was also at the conference that I was just at recently. That was so, so great. How awesome was that? She told me so uh, She told me the story about listening to my podcast and falling asleep with the podcast out, uh, playing out loud. And then her husband came into the room and heard this like voice talking, <laughs> narrating her voice. show. And she's like, who's this guy? Like you're listening to. Somebody so. just told me that recently. They were like, I listened to your podcast because I couldn't sleep. I think that's a compliment. Though. I was like, oh, thank you. Soothing. She, no, yeah. she said, she's like, your voice is very soothing. And I was like, cool. <laughs> Very cool. So Harry at fullcast.co yes. to work with you. And if they want to interview you about marketing or business or podcasting, guys, you could seriously have Harry on your show and he will just give you like all these cool like social media tips and apps and marketing tips. And just every time I talk to him, he's like telling me this new thing that he's using. And I'm like, that is so cool. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Wait, let's just tell people the thing that you... You've got this because full cast Twitter is like automatically tweets my episodes. And you're like, yeah, I have a tool that does that. What yeah. is that tool? The tool is called Twitter feed. It's Twitter feed dot com. What you can do, what you should always keep in mind if you have a podcast and you want to grow your social media reach is think of yourself as a muse museum curator mm -hmm. and a, a, a curator in a museum picks the best things and shows it to the audience because yeah. they know that that's what they want to see. So think about the things that people would want to see from you that you would normally recommend anyway. Yeah. Like I would normally always recommend your episodes because it's related to podcasting. Mm -hmm. So in Twitter feed, you can connect your RSS feed and connect your Twitter handle so mm -hmm. you'll get notified said, hey, I just posted this on my feed and I tagged you. So it's a it's a good way if you're a one man shop to take advantage and and of yeah. act, uh, posting more actively on social media. Yeah, it's great because it means I'm seeing you on Twitter because I'm seeing your you know Twitter and my notifications. But you're helping promote other people, which is you know being a giver first, like helping promote and you know get exposure to all these other shows that are related. So Harry, thank you for jumping on this interview with me, guys. If you want to rock the podcast from both sides of the mic as a host and as a guest, go to interviewconnections.com and we will hook you up with guests and shows that want to interview you. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.